Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button, like, comment, and share this video. And remember to hit the little bell icon to get notifications every time I upload a new video. Let's get into it. It being the Radeon WX2100 Pro Workstation Graphics Card. This is an old GPU and in the spirit of cheap, affordable tech, I'm reviewing it to see if it's worth buying or you should just buy a CPU with good integrated graphics. The card is very beautiful and with what I call uh, cobalt blue, if I knew what cobalt blue looks like as far as connections, the card has display ports only and no VGA or HDMI connections, which I've noticed most people in my region aren't familiar with. And most retailers don't sell display port cables, so you are better off buying it online. It has a single fan, probably 15 to 20 millimeters in size. It's very silent and under use, it doesn't increase noise while keeping the card very cool. The card connects via PCIe and draws power there, so it doesn't have any power connections to get it running. It has a very low clearance, so it'll fit in any ATX case. After installing the drivers and software for the card, I went into the performance tab to see the statistics for the card while idle and under load with an older game that was released around the same time as the card. And what I noticed is it maintains temps of 35 degrees Celsius and power consumption of 4 watts while idle, which is very low. It does have spikes of up to 99% under the utilization tab while idle. The only changes that take place while gaming are the utilization stats, but fan speeds remain in the 2200 RPM area and temps keep it a constant 35 degrees. An in-game benchmark using Alta Street Fighter 4 shows an average FPS of 142, which is very impressive, but this game will run on pretty much anything. While playing the game, it doesn't drop any frames and feels smooth around the 142 FPS range with everything on max. I also did a benchmark using Nova Bench, and the results, however, being low, are not a real world representation of what it's like using the card, but you can see the results on the screen and you can compare the stats to your own PC to see if you should get the card. I also did a test using Need for Speed Most Wanted and the card was able to push out some great environments and performance for this game and it ran without issue for hours. I can also confirm that with a newer game like Doom Eternal, uh, the card held its own at medium settings without overheating and with over 60 FPS. The verdict is if you can get this card for cheap and you're running a low spec machine like a dual core with DDR3 RAM then this card is a must or it's NVIDIA equivalent, the 750Ti. But if you have a machine with high specs, maybe getting a Ryzen CPU with built-in graphics, um, then you might want to put your money uh, to more RAM or storage. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.